Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This is very exciting. I'm really excited to launch this show, People Before Politics. I'm Michelle Ferreri, I'm a member of parliament for Peterborough Kawartha. And the idea behind this was really to delve into who the people are. For years, I worked in media and I would cover politics. I would do, uh, do politics as a correspondent, correspondence. And I often would say to people, how do you decide how to vote? Do you pick the person or do you pick the party? And it was always this kind of question. But if you don't know who somebody is, if you don't know their character, their integrity, their backstory, it makes it very challenging to decide who to vote for. So as a proud conservative, um, I feel really great about our team. And so I decided to launch this show, People Before Politics. So the format of what you're gonna see today is we're gonna have a conversation with a lot of different MPs. And we're gonna talk about who they are, their backstory, how they grew up, their family life, and then what shaped them into the politician that they are today. And we'll talk a little bit about politics because it just wouldn't be a show if we didn't talk about politics. So my very first guest, very excited for this. He kind of helped me come up with this idea. I love this guy, Jazz Raj Singh Halan, but I just call you Jazz. Yeah. I just call you Jazz. Michelle, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> I don't think I could have gotten through whatever you just said right now in one take. <laughs> So congratulations on launching this. You're an absolute rock star, and I'm so honored to serve with you. Uh, Jazz and I, there's people that you meet and you just, you don't have small talk. I'm not a small talk person. I, I like the deep, <laughs> like meaningful conversations. And Jazz and I in the lobby before voting, before question period, we just have had this, these really meaningful conversations about the state of our country, mm -hmm. our families, and, and everything. And your backstory is so fascinating to me, Jazz. Absolutely. And, and likewise, uh, Michelle, I know that you have a lot to share with the world as well to help a lot more people out. Oh, thanks. This is a great platform. Well, I like to talk about other people. It's yeah. way more fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not gossip, but... <laughs> no, no. Thank you for clearing you mean, that yeah. up. Um, so your family immigrated here. That's right. When? Uh, I was uh, born in Dubai. I uh, moved here when I was five, so 1988. You guys can do the math to see how old oh, I am. You're just a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So basically grew up here and um, uh, right into the riding that I get to represent today, and, uh, you know, we, we came here with really humble beginnings, much like uh, our leader now, Pierre mm -hmm. Polyev, who was born and raised in Calgary, as we know. Uh, was, uh, we lived basement to basement, uh, paycheck to paycheck, obviously. Uh, it's a riding that, uh, it, it's, it's such a sense of pride for me to be able to represent it because this was the riding me and my family stood in line for low-income bus passes in. And so, you know, as an, as an immigrant and, and when we see other immigrants today, um, we all come here for the same reason, that's to live the Canadian dream. What do you think the Canadian dream is? Like, what was it for your family? Why do you think they decided Canada? Because a lot of people would tell you the U.S. has the same thing. Yeah, yeah and I agree. So I, I think first and foremost, it's, it's freedom compared yeah. to what, where a lot of people come from. We know there's a lot of refugees who are leaving very uh, hard situations where either they're being persecuted or um, they're escaping literally with their lives. But everyone comes here for a Canadian dream. What that looks like is a better future, a, a safer future, and one that's more secure for them and their kids, mm -hmm. because that's what it was for my parents. And on top of that, when we look at the Canadian dream, for, for me it was, and a lot of the people I talk to is, is owning a business, making sure that your kids can have the best education which we, we have here in Canada, and that they're able to you know, live out their dream of doing whatever job in whatever field they want right here in Canada and be as successful as possible. In my experience in meeting a lot of immigrants, like my, my former husband's family was immigrants as well, and there's, I feel like they're more grateful for what we have than I think of my own family. It's just what we know. We don't know any different. We don't know countries where um, 
rights are, are not even existent. Did you feel like your family was more grateful and worked harder? Uh, absolutely. Look, it, it, most immigrants, in my opinion, uh, have almost like a chip on their shoulder. And we have to understand that some of them come here with so much trauma yes. from wherever they're coming from. And they go through a really tough challenge as well, especially when they come here with kids. Because they're not only going through the, you know, learning the ropes and, and going through all the hurdles that, that one has to go through when mm. they come here, but also there's this cultural shock and this, uh, uh, this generational gap between them and their kids as well, where every parent wants their kids to retain their language, their religion in some cases, and sometimes the, the kids that come with them, they have a completely different outlook. Maybe they don't want to be so attached with their religion or, or they lose their language. So there's another, another added barrier of, of obstacles that get put in front of them. I, can't, I honestly can't imagine. Like uh, coming to a country, you, you don't know the language, you don't, I can't, Im and being a child. Absolutely. And your parents are so stressed. It, it's so stressed out and you know, some that don't come from uh, fin a great financial background. I know many people who uh, come here with just $20 in their pocket. And to go back to your point about how grateful people are, I've seen people literally get off the plane and kiss the ground because this is the land that was the land, it was a beacon of hope for people. This was the land of freedom compared to where they came from. Many immigrants come here for that, that dream that we, we are finally not going to be persecuted, that we have a, a chance, but more importantly, our kids have a chance mm. to be something. Um, when I uh, was very fortunate enough to sponsor a family from Afghanistan, uh, it was a persecuted family. When they got here, it, it was like, I, I, I can't describe that emotion when they touched the mm -hmm. ground. And just the relief and, and the, everyone was just in tears. But it, it's, it, it's a feeling that, you know, many people don't get in life. You have, you're a really positive person. Like you are always in a great mood. You're always upbeat. You know, I can speak just to how the, the rest of the caucus sees you and I watch how you interact with people. Like you, you're really well um, liked because you have this real positivity to you. But you grew up like poor. Uh, yeah, look, um, I think when, when I look at growing up uh, the way that we did, I, I consider it, um, you know, a blessing. Because I, I've always been taught, especially for my elders, and so for me, I, I always looked up to my elders. El elders really uh, kind of put a lot of values inside of me, and they would always say, you know, there's n there's no good or bad experience. There's just experience. I love that. You know, they 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 they're they're, they're, they're a, a part of a generation that had the thickest skin. Mm -hmm. Everything was, uh, y you know, they they didn't give up right away. They would always find alternatives. They would do their best. Uh, they'd, they'd, make, they'd make the best out of the worst situations. Hmm. And I'd always see them with a big smile on their face. No matter what they were going through, they would, they would deal with that on their own. But when they were out, they would, didn't want to have, they didn't want to project that onto someone else. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot from our elders. And for me, I, I'm actually very proud and honored to be with, with a team like people like you. Mm -hmm who we all have our own experiences, that we're all here to uplift each other because at the end of the day, why are we here? We're here to make Canada a better place. You know, we look at each party, we may have different pathways or, or ideologies to get to that, but you know, growing up in, in a team setting and playing sports growing up, like that's what you learn. You learn like your, your teammates will screw up, you'll screw up, but you just need people around you that'll help lift you up. It's true. Right? It's but, true. But going through, going through those tough times growing up, living through, uh, you know, poverty, it teaches you a lot. It teaches you that, that you, to be grateful. Look, immigrants, uh, what, I, what I will say is they, they come here with this entrepreneurial spirit, but more importantly, they, they, by dollar by dollar, they save up. They know the value of each dollar. And that's why, because each dollar counts. It's not so much like that these days. But when, you know, they're not, we're not given much, but when you, when you earn dollar by dollar, you, you value that dollar. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've, I've learned growing up and, and going through those hardships. But you know what? It, it helps shape you and, and it helps you to help others. So how did you get here? Did you always want to be an MP? 
Like I know <laughs> you started your own business. You ran a landscaping business. Uh, it was a, a home building business. Home yeah. building. So, so I, I uh, if someone were to ask me five years ago, I wouldn't, t I wouldn't, I couldn't tell them that I'd be here today. Here, here, right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so you know, I, 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 it was interesting that I, just everything that happened in my life. I, I, I wasn't a, a very I would say bright kid in, in high school or before that. I was involved in some things I shouldn't have been involved in. Didn't really care much about school. And after high school, my, my dad said, uh, uh, you know, he was a taxi driver at the time, and he said, Jazz, so what do you, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. He said, are you going to drive a truck or are you going to be a taxi driver like me? And uh, for, that was his way of saying, like, like get your life together. <laughs> like that and and so I said out of I was angry I said okay what do you what do you want me to do tell me what you want me to do he said I want you to be an accountant and I just said whatever fine <laughs> okay I'll, I'll do whatever you tell me to do so I, you know I'll just keep you happy so I, I went through the you know I went through state uh, a college in, in Calgary I, I did my accounting program and I was very fortunate enough that along the way, I, I, I started getting back into my faith more. Mm -hmm. uh, I was out of faith for a very long time before that because I was involved in gangs and other things like that. And through That's getting, wild, getting, by the way. Yeah. I like how he just kind of <laughs> slips that in. It's like, okay. And, and, but you know, that taught me a lot of valuable lessons about people and loyalty yeah. as well. But uh, along the way, I was very fortunate enough that, that I met some really, really good people who we had the same mission, so we started an after-school program for other at-risk youth, because I was considered an at-risk mm -hmm. youth growing up. And so we had close to 600 uh, kids inside that after-school program. We, through the generous generosity of other small businesses around us, and this is why I, I, I will relate this, just off-topic, that uh, this is why our party is so um, you know, supportive of small business. Yeah. That's why we, we are so supportive of, of small business because small businesses, especially the uh, people who are, who are uh, immigrants and, and ethnic communities, they provide so much back to their communities. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they live that dream, but they're always wanting to give back. And not just here in Canada, but back home so other people can have opportunities. And so we had a, a lot of small businesses that would pay our, uh, we bought a house at the time, they would pay the mortgage, re uh, you know, monthly on it. Mm -hmm just so we could continue teaching the kids. We would teach language, culture, uh, and a whole bunch of other things. Look, I was supposed to teach Punjabi to them, and I didn't teach a, a letter of Punjabi to them. Because for me, it was more important that I have, a, I have a room full of youth in this room. Let's close our books, let's sit in a circle, and let's just talk. Let's build some trust. That's, that's right, build trust. And I learned really quickly that I was learning more from them than what they could ever learn from me. They would talk about the issues that were going on inside their households mm -hmm. and around them. And it was just inspiring to see how they were solving each other's uh, problems. That, you know, they were relatable to each other. And for me, that, that really set the tone for, for um, like, what, what, what my goal was. I, I kind of figured, like, it, it was my why. I, f I figured out that was my why. And then I fast forward, there was a, uh, an MLA, he was, he was the first turbaned minister in the PC party in, in Alberta. His name is Manmeet Puller, and he, uh, throughout my entire life, would, would really, uh, he, was, he was like the figure we all looked up to because he did so much selfless service, we call that term seva in our, in our uh, faith, and he did a lot of seva. He actually died helping, uh, while he was on his way to the legislature in Alberta, helping someone that fell in a ditch in a winter storm, and he was hit by a truck. Hmm. And that family that I was fortunate enough to uh, sponsor to come to Canada, it was through his work. He took on that initiative to bring those people here. The month before he passed away, he called me and said, Jazz, and I, and I was a home builder at the time, he said, Jazz, I don't care what you're doing, I don't care how much money you're making, you have to leave everything, you have to come uh, into politics now. Wow. And I, if, like, you know, it was nothing that I would have ever imagined, like I couldn't imagine myself as a politician. Um, and so he really put, he, he put that seed there for me. Uh, fast forward, I ran in my first nomination in 2018 for the UCP in, in Alberta. I lost the election in April 2019. Uh, and you know, losing elections suck. Hmm. But they also, uh, it was the biggest blessing of my life. 
I was so proud that during that time, we had people that were, you know, so much youth that were door knocking with me in minus 40 weather. Yikes. They were at the doors before I was. So losing sucked, but I was so proud of, of what we mm -hmm. accomplished at that time. And two interesting things happened at the time that I, um, why you just never know what God has in store for mm -hmm. you. April 2019, the, the, the month before when we opened up our office, I had a, a prayer done at the office, you know, for blessings. Mm -hmm. And the person who did the prayer accidentally said, uh, we're, we're, we want to bless this office so Jazz becomes an MP. And I was running for an MLA at the time, so it didn't seem like much at the time. And then the day that we lost, um, I had someone very close to me, one of my business partners said, you know, I, I kind of feel like God will clear up in six months why we lost. And those two exact same, those two things came to fruition. Wow. Six months later, I, I was uh, fortunate enough to win the nomination. I know that was a little bit of a long story to get here, <laughs> but that, that's that's It's always a long to road get to get where we go. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now you are finance critic. So your dad must be like, all right, you blew the account <laughs> thing out of the water, right? Um, finance critic uh, or shadow minister, a lot of people know it as, as critic. And this was appointed to you by our leader, Pierre Polyev. And, you know, you talked about uh, your immigrant status, being Sikh, uh, Turban. I mean, you're one of, of two in, mm -hmm. in our conservative party. That must feel pretty great for your community. Uh, absolutely. You know what? Um, being Canadian is, is first and foremost one of the most proudest things that I can say that we are. That we're in a country where we can be a Sikh. I can practice my faith. Uh, dress the way I dress, uh, wear my turban here, um, and I'm a part of a party that is proud of me for the exact same things. Um, despite what a lot of people would uh, say. Despite the stereotypes uh, <laughs> of what people say. White, what are we? We're white, <laughs> old, <Angry>. racist, misogynistic <laughs> men. That's right. Bo clearly, yeah, that's what I, we are. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we, we had to, you know, break that stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I know you feel the same thing, how much of a pride it is that it's not about what we look like or what you know boxes we check off. Exactly. It's about what we bring to the table. We bring our merits to the table, and you know we we take such pride in having a leader who also wasn't handed anything. Uh, he was born from uh, an unwed mother, was adopted at a young age, mm -hmm. who has uh, you know his his father is uh, also uh, part of the LGBTQ community. Yeah and grew up with such humble beginnings in Calgary, made everything for himself, and now look where he is. Mm. And he wants the same for every, everyone else. So when, when he talked to me about the role, which obviously, look at the shoes, big shoes I have to mm. fill, and it's a, a lot of pressure, but you know, he, he said one thing to me that really struck me, and he said, the opportunities that me and you had, Jazz, to get to where we are today, I want that same opportunity for every single person in this country, whether they live here, or want to come here to this country. It's powerful. That is why that that is why we do what we do, and that really set the stage for me. Uh, that you know, th this party that we're a part of, this is what we want for people: less government in people's lives, so others can have that opportunity. And uh, I, I'm going to be a little bit partisan here. Go um, ahead. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> most people don't see that same opportunity today. They don't see that Canadian dream. When we have 50% of refugees in this country who, who flee, who come here and are living in poverty, mm -hmm. and people who uh, move here, 50% of them want to leave now because of the cost of living, because of just inflation. You know, all these things matter. If we can't have people coming here to, to live the Canadian dream that you know, we get mm -hmm. to live, then, then we're not doing the best we can as a country. Listen, we are in, in probably one of the worst economic <coughs> downturns that we've seen in my lifetime for sure um, you have a major uphill battle in terms of sort of holding the government to account and I mean it's funny right when we look at Minister Freeland who is the finance minister also from Alberta mm -hmm. totally different backgrounds totally different ideologies that come to the table what do you want to accomplish as finance critic uh, well first I'll, I'll say that this is this is our battle all of us together yeah you know, we I think we have such a strong team that have people with experience like yourself. Look how much look how much experience we're all bringing to the mm -hmm. table, 
And we do that every single day when we talk in the house, when we're, when we're in those committees, mm -hmm. where we're making a difference, even when we're making social media posts. We're talking not just from uh, experience, but, but we understand the pain that our constituents are going through right now. And that's what we bring to the table. We will com continue to bring common sense solutions. Like just recently, we brought some really common sense solutions. The, you know, the, uh, we call it the Kossi Coalition of the Liberals and NDP keep raising the cost of a carbon tax that, by the way, hasn't worked, hasn't mm -hmm. uh, you know, stopped emissions from going up. They've failed to reach any emissions reduction target. They keep raising that on Canadians at a time when food prices are out of control, gas prices are out of control, people can't rent houses anymore. And this uh, ideological government keeps raising the price. So we brought some really common sense solutions. We said cancel the carbon tax, cancel the hikes on the carbon tax, mm -hmm. no, new, no new taxes. And uh, just recently we said, um, you know, let's not carb put carbon tax on home heating. Because exactly. we've seen how bad things yeah. are in Atlantic Canada. Every single time those things were voted down by the costly coalition. So we are bringing our own experience to the table mm -hmm. as proof. And that's what we're going to continue to do. As you know, you bring your, your experience whenever you're up in the house, every single time you're up, and I see that. Mm -hmm. You bring that passion there because you've seen that, that you know, tough life. And by mm -hmm. the way, you've got to do a segment all on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> One time you can ask yourself the questions. But, but that's, that's how we're going to continue to hold the government to account. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think... Uh, I think they need us, right? We're the hope, right? As as Pierre has said many times, people are literally hanging on by a thread. And well, they need we'll hope. continue to put the peer pressure on them. I love that. <laughs> that was so great. Uh, okay, quickly, favorite thing. Uh, actually, let's let's end with positive. So, what's the thing you don't like the most about this job? The the thing I absolutely that keeps me up at night is when you have a constituent um, who comes to you. Um, and you're not able to do hmm. what what they've asked, but not not what they've exa exactly asked. But you're not able to let's say um, complete their file because of some can't odd reason. System. You can't fix the system. Yeah. Those those kind of things really bother me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I got to give a huge shout out to our teams because we're away, you know, from our constituency offices a lot between them and the people that we are teamed with here in Ottawa, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for them, we couldn't do what we do. And our families. And our, and our families, you got, absolutely. You got two little absolutely. beautiful girls, That's right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so sweet. And the thing you love the most about this job? Um, being able to serve people. That, that when people come into your office and uh, they're at their wit's end, um, it takes a lot for anyone to admit they need help. But for them to come to your office or call your office or email your office with their issue and you're able to solve that with the help of, you know, with, with your team, mm -hmm. there is no better feeling. Like, that is why we were elected. Some people might think, you know, we come to Ottawa, we give speeches <laughs> or we go to these events, you know, uh, shake hands and, you know, hug babies and things like that. But our, our bread and butter is, is what we do out of our constituency mm -hmm. offices. Great. That is what we do and that's the most fulfilling part of this job. It is. I, I always say, if you're not listening to the people, there's no way you can speak for them. Here, here. You you can't, right? right? So, if you do not sit down and listen, yep. How in the world are you supposed to know what's happening in their life? Uh, that's right, and that's the same thing when we do come to Ottawa and we're giving our speeches and we're we're asking questions, mm -hmm. we're doing our SO thirty ones. That's what we're doing. We're taking our experience from our offices and we're representing and being the voice that we were elected to be mm -hmm. inside of the House of Commons. Well, there he is, folks, MP Jazz Raj Singh Halan, MP for Calgary Forest Lawn. That's right. Did I get it right? That's right. Oh, that's so, uh, Calgary <laughs> is amazing. I had a chance to go out there. It's an amazing place. As Calgary you, loves as you. you. Know, it's amazing. Um, this has been great. I, I told you. See, that's what I get to say at the end. I told you. You don't know what you don't know about these MPs. You see these little snippets. You, you really don't know the depth of each MP, and that's why I'm really excited. And we'll have, uh, we'll have more of these interviews coming up. It's the people before politics, but the person shapes uh, what politics they believe in, and it shapes also our conservative values. So, that's Jazz, right. you're my man. Let's go to question period let's, and ask some let's questions. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching.